Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fit Chicks Chat. My name is Amanda Quinn. And my name is Laura Jackson. And today's podcast, we are talking specifically about how teaching group fitness made me and Laura <laughs> made us more money than our corporate jobs. So crazy. I know it sounds kind of insane because a lot of times people are always asking, you know, is it possible to make money in this industry? And 100% it is. Now, before we dive into this though, um, we do want to just mention and remind you that our fitness and nutrition expert certification program is open for enrollment right now. So if you have not already enrolled, if you're interested in getting certified in becoming a coach and replacing your income or generating a new income stream or a side hustle or anything like that, make sure you go to fitchicksacademy.com forward slash F and E for more details. Okay. So um, yeah, so little backstory, we're going to just talk about how we actually made more money teaching group fitness than we actually had made like through our salaries of our corporate jobs. Now, I know for me that that is true because my corporate job before when we started Fit Chicks Bootcamp, so long story short, when we started Fit Chicks Bootcamp in 2008, Laura and myself both had corporate jobs. We did what we thought we were supposed to do, went to school, post-secondary school, got the corporate jobs, started to quote unquote, climb the corporate ladders. And I know like Laura and I, we've been best friends forever. And I know Laura, when we lived together, we were both doing, uh, we were both working our corporate jobs. We used to come home from work, totally unsatisfied, totally anxious, didn't hate our jobs, but didn't love our jobs. And um, I don't want to speak for you, but I know for me, like I worked as the manager of sponsorship and advertising for the Toronto International Film Festival. It's a good job, good opportunities for growth. And I just didn't feel like satisfied or excited. And we decided actually at an outdoor fitness class that we were going to start our own fitness business. And it was kind of like this crazy moment. And I do remember this moment so clearly, like I, I can picture it in my brain. Like I remember Nelly Furtado was playing in the background. We were laying on the grass. We were doing crunches under the stars. It was like, we're doing crunches, Nelly Furtado. And we were both looked at each other and we're like, this is what we should be doing. <laughs> yes. And I also remember, I mean, I have always, since I was younger, been like had an, a, a drive to want to open a business. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why, like I always just like, I even, I remember like, I don't know if anyone remembers these dolls, the Cabbage Patch dolls. Yeah. Of course. Um, so my, like when I was growing up, that was when we were growing up, that was like the thing when you were little kids, right? It was like, my mom went out and waited at the mall for like five hours to get this cabbage patch doll because it would sell out it was like the tickle me yeah. elmo rage like it oh my would God. just my sell dad, out so fast my dad liked to get me one he split his pants running up an escalator yeah i remember that so clearly he came home and he's like i ripped my pants and there was, was no was so like ebay it was, like, it was not the one i wanted i was like i'm so disappointed <laughs> me too it was not the one i wanted either but i you know what i mean i was like we got to take what we can get here yeah <laughs> but it was just like there was no ebay back then there was no nothing so what you got was what you got. But I just remember yeah. when I was in primary school or whatever, because I guess I was probably in grade four when this happened, maybe grade three. But I remember because I didn't get the one that I wanted, all the other kids in class, also their parents had got them Cabbage Patch kids. And um, I wanted ones that had different clothes too. And so I created this little Cabbage Patch swap where like we would tra trade clothes for the day. And it was kind of like this little swap system. Really, I did it so I would be able to, put the clothes on my doll <laughs> and but it was like I created this whole little thing and I just realized like from a very young age I was always like a natural leader and I always had this I always questioned authority like I'm not good with being told what to do and like I just kind of always loved the idea of being my own boss like you know and I and I had great experience I worked with amazing mentors my boss before was amazing she became one of my really good friends and you know my job was I traveled into LA I'd fly into Beverly Hills like it picked up in a town car like we'd be at all these fancy parties and it was awesome like it was so awesome and I will never regret that but there was always this like nagging feeling inside of me like this is not my path this is not for me like this is not what I meant to be doing mm -hmm. and then I remember when you and I were like and it wasn't like this is the thing I want to say to people because some people think they need to have this big epiphany. I'm quitting my job and I'm starting a business, right? To be able to start a business. Yeah. If you have a whisper, right? Like if you have a whisper that you're meant for something different than this or something that, you know what I mean? You want to be able to create something in the world that is outside of your job or whatever, that it will snowball, right? It builds. Like 
there are certain people, depending on your personality type, who will just know what they're doing and make really big decisions. And a lot of people, including myself, it has to start. I had to build, I had to expand my mind, my mindset, my business skills, my abilities. Right. So even for us, when we first started, we're like, let's, we're going to practice teaching fitness together. And we just practiced teaching fitness on each other. We did fitness classes for us on our friends. We didn't charge them any money. Yeah. Then we're like, okay, people are loving our classes. We're like, we should, you know, put something out there, put up some posters, see what could happen. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, we always knew we were doing something bigger, but we weren't in a rush to get there, which I think too made such a difference for us because it wasn't like corporate or entrepreneurship. It was like corporate. And we have this feeling we really want to do this. And like, let's start work building it up and building it up. And then a year and a half into it, we left our corporate jobs because we were making enough money just to replace our incomes. Right. And I think that's the one thing that a lot of people don't know about us in our story is that we did keep our corporate jobs for just over a year. It was about, I don't know if it was a full year and a half, but it was just over a year and for a, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it was about a year and a half. Yeah. And but we, I would tell everyone, like my piece of advice to people would be, and again, everyone's different. Some people, if you have savings and reserves and you want to go all in on your business, but my piece of advice to everybody, even in the academy is like, start this as a part-time business. Don't put the pressure of finances on yourself to make this work because then your business becomes everything and yeah. you put too much pressure on your business. You know what I mean? It Because it it's, so it's just a baby. Stress. And it's, there's already so much stress just building a business. So then having to totally. like build a business and then also have be reliant on that business when it's just in the infant stages is a lot of stress. And, that's and I once heard a coach say that and I loved it. It's like, you have to think of your business when you start it like a child, like it's a baby. You don't expect the baby to feed you. You feed the baby. You don't expect the baby to take care of you. You take care of the baby. And then as the baby grows up and it doesn't mean it has to take 20 years, but as the baby grows up, then eventually it can start to do more things for you. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, but at that beginning, it's like, we want it to be so much, but then we put so much pressure on the success of the business. This is what I think why most entrepreneurs fail. Like, because they just, they don't, they don't do it in a way that is allowing themselves to, you know, step into their role as a business leader and start to test things and start to grow their classes. Like, because for us, we never took out loans. We never put ourselves in debt. We literally put sweat equity in it. Like literally we were sweating, teaching all the classes, (laughs) putting up our posters, getting out there and getting people in class. And that's what built up our business because also by us being so involved in that process and yes, guys, we're not going to lie. It wasn't like, okay, we were just like, you know, not over, like we were burnt out. Like we were working a lot. Like at that time it was like, we'd work full time. We teach fitness classes after work. We would go afterwards, but we wanted this business to work. So we were willing to do what it would take. Right. And sometimes it takes a season of more work of hustle. Right. But I think through that too, we learned so much about business, about our brand, about how our workouts, how, who we wanted to be. And it was just such an amazing time. Like it still is an amazing time, but it was just such an amazing time that I look back at, and I'm just so proud of us for doing it the way we did it, because also it just, it never felt, it never felt pressury because it was always the side thing that we're like, Hey, we'll just do this. We're going to focus on, we're going to see what happens. But I have this other income coming in, in case. Mm -hmm. And then when we replace our corporate income, we're like, okay, see you later. Now we're all in. Well, yeah. And I mean, for anyone who is curious, like when we were teaching our fitness classes um, in the beginning, of course, you know, for anyone who knows our story, we had seven women sign up to that first class and then we ended up building it and growing it. But, you know, having seven women would not have replaced our monthly salary. So we knew that we needed to grow it. So what we did was for that period of time, that year and a half, roughly, what we did was all of the money that we were making from our fitness classes, because they were growing and they were duplicating and they were selling out. We were taking that money and we were reinvesting it either into the business. So either for tech, for graphic design, for posters, for fax advertising, (laughs) which was one of our favorite ways to advertise way back in 2008. Love fax advertising. (laughs) Like all of these things, but we used to take the money and reinvest it back. And then the rest of it, we banked. And what we did was when we did end up quitting our full-time jobs and like what we say, we traded our suits for sweats and we like went 100% on board with like just fit chicks. 
we had enough money in the bank to cover both of our salaries for a year. So then that way there, we were like zero, we were like, okay, we're going in on this. We know we can pay ourselves the same that we would have paid ourselves. So we could replace our corporate revenue and allow for us to be able to just focus on the business. That way there, we weren't working in a scarcity mindset. We weren't operating from a place of like, how are we going to pay our rent? How are we going to pay for our bills this month? It was like, okay, everything is covered. Let's continue to focus on building and growing our business and finding new members and finding new clients and perfecting the model that we were trying to build out. And that was it. Like that was our main focus. And from, I think from doing that from a place where you're going into it without that scarcity mindset, I think it really helps because it puts you into a place of like growth and it puts you into a place of feeling successful even in the moments, even in the months that maybe didn't have as bigger numbers, you still didn't feel like it was like, it wasn't as stressful, if that makes sense. Well, and also it allowed us to not rely on the money that was coming in from our boot camp to live on it. We were able to reinvest that mm-hmm. into our marketing, like you were saying, into all the things, which again, a lot of people, when they're new to business, they just, they make money and then they spend all their money. And then they're like, okay, I, I don't have any money left over and I don't have people in my classes. It's like, because business is all about marketing, right? Like you need to have fresh people in your classes. You need to have, you know, it's traffic. It's like having a great program, having a really good result, then also being able to service your current clients. Like there's different layers to it, but you always need to have new people coming in. So that's why for us, because any profit we made, we just put it right back in. That's what allowed us to grow. And I was listening to another one of our friends who's a coach um, and she was just talking about how she's like, you know, I want to have some realistic conversations with people because everyone wants this get rich quick scheme or they want, you know what I mean? Like they just want to start a business in it to be successful. She's like, I always tell my people it's going to be like six months to a year mm-hmm. till you're having reoccurring revenue. Like the beginning, it's going to be spotty at the beginning. You might not be making any profit because you're taking everything and putting it back in to more marketing or whatever, which is normal. So it's not like this is a bad thing, but if you, if you are thinking, oh, I'm just going to teach fitness, make money, spend that money. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to always make sure you've got enough people in your classes. Like you've got to, so it's just is, um, yeah, I just love the idea of building your business part-time into full-time. I agree with that. And now just to wrap this up, I do want to share though, the actual math, the numbers, because I do think that Again, going back to the original statement that I made where, you know, we were able to generate more revenue per month teaching group fitness classes than we were making our salary. Um, Oftentimes people think like that's not possible, right? It's not possible. And I'm going to tell you 100% authentically, um, Laura and myself, we were teaching back-to-back classes. Um, So I was teaching two nights a week. I taught Monday and Wednesday nights at my location. I taught from 6 p.m. till 7 p.m. and then 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Those were my time slots. Because I didn't want to add more nights, right? I wanted to just be able to teach the two nights back to back classes. Now, this didn't happen like in the very beginning, but um, within that first year, I was teaching a year, year and a half. I was teaching back to back classes. They were sold out. I had 20, so sold out for us was 20 women or 20 members. So I had 20 members in my first class, 20 members in my second class. They were all paying $159 for four weeks. We offered eight week options as well, but just to simplify the math, it was $159 for four weeks. So 40 members times $159 is over $6,300 a month. So I share this with you because again, it's like thinking about how easy or how possible that is for you, right? And also the one thing that I share a lot of times in our um, fitness and nutrition expert program, when I'm talking to students about building programming and everything else is when you build a program, you're setting yourself up versus doing one-off classes, you're setting yourself up to have reoccurring revenue and to have revenue in advance. Like you have cash up front, you know how much you're going to make for that month. It allows for you to be able to plan for it, to be able to plan for marketing, to be able to plan for like how much you want to pay yourself, all of those kinds of things. But you want to be able to set yourself up in a way that you're able to generate like reoccurring revenue or having monthly like payments and things like that versus just one-off classes. So that's why we set our program up the way that we did. It was $159 for four weeks. We had that money coming in and that was month after month after month. 
And my salary wasn't that much. I was working, um, the Toronto International Film Festival is a not-for-profit company. And so I was generating, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and so they, they paid me, even though I was in a management role, it wasn't, um, it wasn't as much money as we were generating <laughs> with our boot camp programs. So I just, you know, I want you to know that it is possible and depending on what your model looks like, you know, and that's the great thing about our fitness and nutrition expert certification is that it certifies you in group fitness, personal training, nutrition, and wellness coaching. So you have so many different avenues and so many different opportunities to create programming for your clients. So you're not just, you know, only able to offer personal training and then only able to, you hit a cap of like, I can only offer so many sessions in a day and I can only charge so much. That's also why we went with the group fitness route. And I know we've done podcasts before about why we teach group fitness. So make sure that you, if you want to learn more about our reasoning behind focusing on group fitness versus personal training, definitely go back and check out those podcasts as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted well, to- Well, the last thing I just want to say that before we yeah. go into it too is when we started as well, there was no online option. So there's the sky is so the limit now because you can have an in-person and then also have an online, like, which then you can serve the whole world. So there yeah. really, this, there's so much opportunity if you're willing to do the work, you know what I mean? Like if you're will, if you love it and that's a thing, like if you have that whisper, plant, like plant that seed and it will start to grow. Like it's not going to sprout up overnight, but this is where, and which is why we teach in our program too, all about the business side of things as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, with that said, um, we're going to wrap it up for today, but thank you guys so much for listening. And again, our fitness and nutrition expert certification starts on April 5th. So if you feel like that is the pathway for you, if that is something that speaks to you, if this is something that speaks to you, if this podcast today has shown you that, yes, it is possible for you to generate money as a side hustle, a part-time thing, or even change careers, um, make sure you check it out. Fitchicksacademy.com forward slash F and E. We start on April 5th. So do not miss out. Um, we're super pumped and we will see you there. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye everyone. Bye.